Hello and welcome to the instructions on how to apply for Campbell University's online campus. Please note that this is for the 100% online program only. If you wish to attend a different campus, please contact that campus for instructions on how to apply. We are thrilled that you're interested in Campbell University online and we're here to help you through every step of the way. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email us at online at campbell.edu. At the end of this video, I will also show you how you can use our chat feature or schedule an appointment to meet with us. So let's get started. All to do the application, you're going to go to our Campbell website, which is campbell.edu forward slash online. Make sure you're at that forward slash online or you'll be filling out the wrong application. You're going to click on apply. And then you're going to click on apply again. This screen is where you will go to create your application profile if you are a new applicant. This will also be where you can return to log on to your application profile to check the status. So to get started, you're going to create your Campbell user account. You're going to create your username and make sure to write that down somewhere because you will need it to log in at the next step. You're going to put in your email your first and last name. We do ask that you try to capitalize properly. It helps us clean, keep clean records and make sure that all your address labels and the like um, are set up right. Once you've filled out the information, you're going to click Create Account. It's going to take a moment and then you'll get this blue, a green box that says thank you for creating account. You're going to go to the email that you used to set up this account and you will see an email from Campbell University Online, Application Account Creation Confirmation. In this email, you need to click on the link in order to confirm your account. You'll know all is well when you see this green box here that says thank you for verifying your email address, please sign in. Now you're going to sign in with the username that you created in the step before and the password. If you have any issues with your password, this is where you'll click the forgot username or password um, to get a new password. You want to make sure you read through this entire page before you proceed. It's going to have a rundown on what is required and uh, how the process works from here. Once you've read through everything, you want to acknowledge the application and click next. At any time, if you need to stop the application and come back later, you can click save and exit. It will prompt you that you still have information to provide, but you can come back later and provide that. You want to fill out everything that you have knowledge of. Anything that is asterisked must be completed. You're going to click what term you want to start and what degree you are seeking. Please note that these group of bachelor's degrees called Bachelors of Applied Science require that you either have an Associates in Applied Science or military credits that meet the requirements. If you do not have either of those, you, are, you may still be eligible for our standard bachelor's programs listed below. You're going to walk through everything, answering it to the best of your knowledge. You'll complete everything that has the asterisk. The social security number is not required for initial application, but if we are going to accept you, we will need it before we can process your acceptance. The financial aid office and the computer and services um, requires it to set up all of your accounts. You will also enter all of your dates. Please note that the date format is listed below. It must be two digit month, two digit year, and four, I'm sorry, two digit month, two digit day, and four digit year. It will tell you you're wrong if you try to move on from this point. You'll complete everything that is required and anything else that you're comfortable in completing. As I mentioned above, if you look under each of these forms, it will give you a idea of what you can put in if you're getting stuck with what format uh, should be used. Again, you're going to move on to the next screen, filling out the data as you go.
Down below, we also ask for phone contact. We do have a great service called Mongoose Texting, where we send out text reminders and you can ask us questions via text, but you must give us permission to text you in order to do that. If you don't have a landline and you just have the cell phone, you can put your cell phone number twice there. You want to again confirm that your email is right. Next, you're going to fill out your military status and complete the rest of the information that's required below. You do not need to provide a JST if you are in the military. We will order an official copy for you. Please note that that is one place we will have to have your social security number um, in order to do that. You're also going to pick whether you're going to be using benefits. We do say err on the side of caution. So if you think you may be using TA or VA, pick yes. That way we can make sure your information gets to the right people. It does not make any obligation um, on you if you, are, um, if you select one of these. They do only apply to military people. So if you have chosen no above in the military status, these options will not open for you. As I told you, if you make a mistake, it will tell you. So I entered the month and year incorrectly. Here they didn't want to date just a month and a year. So it's an easy correction to go back. Here's where you're going to list all of your schools. As I mentioned at the beginning, you must, you must list every school that you have attended, even if you did not get grades. Um, it, the FAFSA process, all financial aid is reviewed, and if you did not report schools, it can jeopardize your acceptance and you could be denied the ability to take future classes. So please make sure to list every school you have ever attended. When it comes to attendance dates and GPA, please put your best, um, rem, uh, best idea of what you have. Um, we will verify that against fish, official transcripts. In your undergraduate history, this is also very important that you list every undergraduate school you have attended. Uh, we must have this information or you can be de denied the ability to take additional classes in the future. If you need to add an additional school, you simply click add another response and it will give you another option. And you just keep clicking that until you've added every school that you've attended. If you click too much, it's pretty easy. You just click remove entry. If you have entered your most recent school, make sure to check the most recently attended school box. Your GPA from your most recent school is one of the most heavily weighted factors that we use in admissions. So it is helpful to know which one was the most recently attended school. Again, you're gonna click next. Not everyone will have information to put in this next tab, test scores. If you have ACT, SAT, or CLEP scores that you want to report, they are not requirement. Um, this would be where you report them. Employment is also not required, but it's helpful if your employer likes to know where you are attending school or if you have tuition reimbursement. These next questions are mostly for financial aid purposes. First, do you plan to file a FAFSA? Again, erring on the side of the caution is a good idea. And then sometimes we offer contests and giveaways, so we ask your t-shirt size. Below, we ask if you've ever been charged with a felony or if you ever have any ad academic warning, probation, suspension, or dismissal in an academic setting. Honesty is the best policy here. It will not automatically disqualify you from attendance at Campbell online, but if you do not report it and it's disclosed later, it can cause you a lot of trouble. So please report it, explain your circumstances, and we will reach out to you if we need more information. From here, you will then electronically sign the document. And this next screen is where you upload your official, your unofficial transcripts. This is the warning box that I was telling you about earlier if you're missing any information. Uploading is very easy. You click on attach file. You browse to where your file is. Um, PDF is the most um, efficient way to get us documents, but we can accept uh, JPEGs and the like. I am just using some generic files to serve as an example. 
Remember, it has to be your unofficial transcript or we cannot process your application. So make sure to get those transcripts uploaded. And then in the student ID photo area, this is where you're going to upload the passport style photo so that we can get you your student ID. Once that is all uploaded, you can click Submit Application. It takes just a moment to upload all those documents and you will receive a confirmation notice when that is done. Applications typically take five to 10 business days to process and we will communicate with you via email, so keep your eye on the email. As I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, we do have a couple ways to reach us besides just phone and email. First, we do have a chat feature. If we are in the office, you can click with chat with us, which is in the bottom right hand side of the screen. And we are live and able to chat with you. If we're not there, it will ask you to leave a message and we'll get back to you in the morning. Please make sure to leave your email address in that message or we have no way of reaching you. Another option is to schedule an appointment. You can come meet with us in the Bowie's Creek location, you can schedule a telephone appointment, or you can schedule a chat appointment. As I said, if you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to email us at online at We look forward to your application and working with you in the future.